on the video, in this truck we talked about independence and we're joined by Paul who is the founder and president of Righteous Media. We talked about questions like what unifies political independence and so many other questions and provocations related to political independence. And be on the lookout for part two because this was an amazing conversation where we just scratched the surface of this topic. And so without further ado, here is the trek. Hello everyone and welcome to the trek. The Trek is a Civics Unplugged series where community members participate in meaningful discussions on topics that are too often neglected when thinking about building the future. Through prompting questions and provocations, we venture together into complex but important conversations related to building the future and democracy. We understand that this work requires ongoing dialogue, but it's a journey worth trekking through. I'm Madison, I'm a high school senior from Verdigris, Oklahoma, joined by some community members and a special guest, which we'll get to hear from in just a moment. And today we are talking about independence and we always start off with the word association. So when you see your name on the screen, introduce yourself and say the one of three words you associate with the topic and why. Hi everyone, my name is Jay He and I'm calling in from Dayton, Ohio. I'm a junior in high school and I'd associate independence with the word discomfort because I feel like it symbolizes like traversing beyond your comfort zone and confronting like your past limitations, your biases and social norms. Hello everybody, I'm Namishka and I'm calling from India. Um, and the two words I associate with freedom would be one essential and two to fight for. I think that's three words, but yeah. Hi, my name is Tanasi. I'm 18, co-founder of CU, currently in New York City. Um, I think the two words probably would be um, complicated and you know, I, I'm actually just going to say complicated. I think there's it's it's so it's such a, a hard issue for me to wrap my head around that I'm just I'm very interested to see like what direction this conversation will flow. Hey everyone, I'm Julia. I'm 23 years old and I live in Pennsylvania currently. Um, I'm going to say absence of labels. Um, when I think of independence, I think of independent thinking, and to me, a big part of that is like taking in information as is and um, as it comes and as is and not automatically categorizing everything and putting it into a box. Hi, um, I'm William Fredericks. I'm tuning in from uh, Brooklyn, New York right now. Um, when I hear independence, I think of you know separating yourself from a group or you know, a system that you don't quite believe in and just, you know, run with it on your own kind of a thing. Hey everyone, I'm Gary calling in from uh, New York City. Um, I think of freedom, I'll just stick with one word today. I think it's, people, not just politicians, um, people, and not, not just in politics, we're influenced by so many things that to be truly independent, I don't know if anyone is you know can consider themselves fully independent um but I, I think it's like an ideal to strive to strive for to be to be as independent as possible in this time where everyone's pressuring you to to think one thing or another or hate hate one person or another hey everybody paul reikoff i am the president and founder of righteous media uh an author social entrepreneur uh, father of two small boys, I come to you live from Studio A of Righteous Media, also known as my garage, uh, in, in an undisclosed location in upstate New York, somewhere in the mountains. Um, I will say essential, uh, especially right now in these precarious times for our country and our world. I think independence, as I'm sure we'll define it in many ways over the course of this conversation, is essential. Wow, this word association has already been so helpful because my mind did not go to the same places immediately as so many of your minds did. For some reason, the first phrase that came to mind is every man for himself. And I was thinking of independence in the way that like, I feel like a lot of people in the US may view it right now is um, kind of like an excuse for like isolation a lot of times. Like, oh, I'm independent, I'm self-sustaining, I don't need um, other people. And that kind of dangerous mindset is what came to mind at first. Um, but yeah, thank you all for sharing. We can go ahead and hop into the conversation. So 
Does anyone have a question or provocation to get us started off with? Um, I can I can start off with one. Um, it's a provocation. Political independence can be great unifiers. I think that it's just it's it's interesting when you say political independence because it's it's like I was recently reading this article those like freedom from things and freedom to things freedom to do things like the two forms of independence. And so when I think of like political independence, I think of, of freedom from like these like really violent ideologies, but I don't know if, if independence are unifiers. I feel like independent people who are politically independent usually are more separated from the pack and are, are less powerful because collectivism is inherently not what they're striving for. Yeah, and I would say like it depends on the independent. Not obviously not all independents are the same. I think of someone like Bernie Sanders. Yeah, he's an independent, but he's very far left, and so that's not very unifying to people on the right. And so it takes the right kind of like political independent, especially for political office, for someone to be truly like. And it's not just like necessarily in the middle because that's problematic as well. It takes a very particular set of like. Um, policies and ideology in order for an independent to be truly unifying. But then in that, in that going with what you said, technically uh, cent centralists should be, centralists are politically independent and they should be great unifiers, but I don't see it happening. Maybe I'll jump in. Now you guys see why we called our show Independent Americans, because it's really fun to, to talk about <laughs> and to explore. Even I'm going to throw up maybe a, a, a reaction um, that you chose to write independence and not independence is a choice, too. And how people hear it is part of what we explore in my show and maybe what we'll explore today. But um, I've been really excited and interested in hearing how people, especially of different generations and different places define the word independent and independence. Um, it's a really, I think, important discussion that we're having as a country and as a globe right now. But for me, I often think about my personal independence and how I raise my children to be independent of coercion, influence. A, ga a game we play in my house is I try not to have my kids watch commercials on television. And when they do, I ask them, what are they trying to sell you? And they play the game of what are they trying to sell you? And if you watch, for example, a Viagra commercial, it's pretty difficult to figure out as a, as a four-year-old what they're actually trying to sell you. Pharmaceutical commercials may be the most difficult, but I'm excited by this debate and this discussion because it's part of what we've been exploring on my show for many weeks and months now. I've just, I've, I've always wondered like, what political independence means like are you independent of the political system because i get people are like independent of party right and and usually those people are either super moderate and pretty bland or you know have their own views everywhere but if you're independent of the political system where do you where do you fit like how do you see yourself interacting with society because you can you can be independent of whatever you want but it, it, if you're independent of the system then like how do you influence it yeah. Are you thinking about like people that like there's this guy in like the um, one of these West, in, like the Western um, half of the country that has his own country? <laughs> or, yeah, like, like, yeah. Like, he, he, if you if you declare yourself independent, like that's really great. But if no one recognizes your independence and it doesn't really affect anyone else, are you really like doing anything? I don't know. Um, ask Northern Ireland. I mean, or ask a lot of countries that are declaring their independence constantly. Right. I mean. Um, you know, here, here's one thing that I'll, I'll add if I can about what we've been exploring in my show is the, 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 the brand of independent is interpreted differently, but politically what it is generally meant recently is declaring yourself either as an independent small I or unaffiliated. It even depends on how you declare for voting in your state, or you can declare the independent party, which is something completely different. So at least in the voting in most states in the U.S., you, there are some places where you could be independent small I, you could be unaffiliated, 
or you could be independent party with a big eye. So that's part of what we've explored as well. And one thing we did share is that people who are unaffiliated and or independent from the two major political parties have increased pretty dramatically over the last few years. And especially over the last few months, we've seen a lot of people leave the Republican Party and declare themselves unaffiliated. So that's something we explored and the data that we can actually look to to see how trend lines are changing. Yeah, so Tanasi, I think that for, for most people, they don't have like a grand plan for what it means like to be on like what what they want to do with their unaffiliation, their lack of affiliation to like Democrat or Republican. But like, um, I think step one is just saying you're sick of it, right? And I, I think I think st starting with like, yeah, it, it's kind of it's just like a, a way to use your, your voice is by not feeling pressured to have a D or an R next to your name. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, right? Because like, a lot of times we operate in politics based on politicians, and there's not a model right now for what like for a, a truly like someone who's I mean th there are like independent elected officials but they're they're very few and they're not uh very well known and so it, I think it's a lot harder for people to identify when there's not like champions of political independence mm. Gary I don't know how much you want me to jump in here um so I'll, I'll defer to you but oh, please whatever uh, whatever feels I don't want to I don't want to dominate but I'll, I'll offer my perspective and what we've explored in in my show is um so you've got two senators who are politically independent right now Angus King from Maine and Bernie Sanders from from Vermont technically independent but they both caucus with the Democrats which we could go a lot deeper on another time um, and I, the, the guest I had on my 101st episode was Evan McMullen, who ran as an independent candidate for president in 2016, the most recent, you know, some could argue, um, even marginally successful candidate. And it was noteworthy because I think he got over 20% of the vote in Utah, which is his home state, you know, some may not view as, as, as overwhelming or, or even important, but it was significant um, in terms of being able to capture a significant percentage in a state. Um, you could go all the way back to the times of of, um, of Steve Forbes and Ross Perot. You know, if, if not for Ross Perot, you probably don't have Bill Clinton. Um, and third party candidates have been spoilers a lot in U.S. presidential politics over the years. And that may change over time. But if you think about the emergence of Bloomberg in the last two years, a lot of folks were really concerned that if Bloomberg jumped in, that it would turn the race to Trump. And he even argued often that that's why he didn't jump in as a quote unquote independent candidate. Um, so there are some pretty recent examples that we've explored on my show, and I think you may see more of, but one challenge that maybe runs against some of what we've been saying is that it's hard to run as an independent. It's actually really hard to raise money. It's hard to make it through the primaries. You know, you, you go often in, in states like New York City, uh, the mayor's race will be decided in the primary this summer. It'll be over. Whoever wins the Democratic primary will be the mayor. Um, and there aren't too many other options unless you're a billionaire. And that's part of what I'm exploring and hoping we can change is to give people who are saying none of the above, at least with regard to libertarian, uh, Republican and other parties, give them a viable path toward political elected office, which I think is important. And, and campaign finance reform, ranked choice voting, those things are having a big influence and could really influence the viability of independent candidates. Can I? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to pose another question. Um, oh, so, I was also, okay. Yeah, me okay, too. I'll go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, I can just write mine down and then we can write the other ones down and people can hop around. Um, but thinking about how political independents are literally, that means they believe in anything but like the options right now. And that's just like such a wide spectrum. So my question would be is like, what unifies political independence? So I would challenge the first part of your question, right? In, in saying that they don't stand for anything, right? As an example, because there are unifying things that we've explored, like a disproportionate number of independents have supported a pull out of Afghanistan. A disproportionate number of self-declared independents have supported legalization of marijuana. Um, you know, there are issues, uh, gay rights and equality tend to do better among independents than Republicans, maybe less better than than Democrats, but I think that there there isn't a real binding uh, issue, but we do see trend lines that tend to overlap among people who consider themselves independents. 
And I've been careful about saying an independent is because it's a lot like saying, you know, the Democratic Party is pretty diverse, right? You've got somebody like Joe Biden and AOC in the same party right now. Independents are even more diverse. There are some folks, especially younger folks that I've met that consider some, themselves independents because the Democratic Party isn't left enough. So it's, it's, it's really something that we want to explore and debate because a lot of people are using the term and, and interpreting it in their own way. Um, and that's been, been exciting, but it's also especially important to look at, I think, how um, political candidates have tried to micro-target so-called independents in swing states. So a place like Pennsylvania, Florida, you're gonna hear a lot about independents that pollsters can identify. They can say they're disproportionately white men over a certain age, you know, of a certain background that believe a certain thing. So it, it's, it's still in flux, but I think there are trend lines. And I think what I wanna highlight is that more and more people in this country, in my view, especially in y'all's generation, uh, are rejecting both parties. You know, you guys have a million options on Amazon, but you only have two candidates you can vote for. That seems out of whack with the current dynamic in America. And that's part of what I've been exploring quite a bit in the last couple of, of years, really. I agree with that last part, but I also just like really quick, I, I think that when you have a country as big as the United States, but like even like, and no, Sheik, I, I'm sure you can speak to this too, but like my friend has been taking me through Indian politics and that's even more crazy. But, oh, you, you know, know, it's like, it, when you have political independence, it's, it, I think the through line is they're, they're rejecting the two major parties. And while there could be some similarities between them on both social and economic lines, it's very diverse. And so when I think of independence, I think it's, it's a great first step towards like the future of what our democracy looks like. But a, a country with a huge independent voting base and then Democrats and Republicans, I think is even worse because then you have absolutely no clue what anyone believes. And there's there's a lot of space for fighting and no space for, um, like the point of political parties is to is to condense arguments for the masses, right? And, and to like be able to, everybody's a very diverse individual, right? But you're gonna have to ascribe yourself to one view or another. Like you can, not everybody can have a say in a representative democracy. So I think the future is multiple parties that are very different, like a bunch of left on the spectrum parties, a bunch of right on the spectrum parties, a bunch of like middle social, middle economic. But I don't know if independence, I don't know if I'm a big believer in the independent movement, but I, that could be wrong. And maybe this will come back to bite me in a year or two, but who knows? Yeah, I, I, I hear where you're coming from. I, I would just challenge the idea that the parties are right now focused on condensing ideas. Some could argue the parties are focused on consolidating power. They could focus on that they're protecting some group of people over another, right? I think that that's open to interpretation too. And I, I think what I'm most excited about is um, someone who decides they're going to be an independent or unaffiliated usually is given it a bit of thought, right? It's harder to be, in my view, an independent or an unaffiliated than to just say, oh, you know what, I'm a Democrat because my mom was, or I'm, an I'm a Republican because my dad is, or everybody else is. Most of the people that I've seen that have decided to, to, to push that, they have a reason why. And in my view, they are often um, the, the more pragmatic voters, maybe the more challenging voters. And, and I think the system does be, need to be disrupted. And I don't think our founders envisioned a two party monopoly like we've got right now. Um, and there's not a lot of compromise happening. We're gonna see that in the next year, especially, that it's gonna be really driven across partisan lines. And the default now is, congratulations, everybody. Joe Manchin is king right now. And is yes. That what you want for America right now? <laughs> Joe Manchin is king of, of, of our democracy, yes. right? <laughs> That's where we are right now. <laughs> Paul, Paul I, was, I, was, I was joking with friends that like, okay, who is the most powerful person in American politics right now? They're like, I don't know, Joe Biden. I was like, guess again. They're like, uh, this is pretty dis un un uninformed. I was like, someone said AOC. I was like, nope. It's like someone said George Soros. I was like, nope. It's Joe Manchin. Joe, the, the guy that that is is not going to move unless there's, look, I, there's probably other motives, right? But that's publicly stated that he's not going to move unless there's compromise. Well, congrats. There's not going to be compromise, right? Because there's two parties whose identity is like, in big part defined in their opposition to each other. They have a negative incentive to actually work together. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'll add one data yeah. point too. You know, Bernie and many others 
who have been, you know, kind of selectively use the eye, right? Like he uses it sometimes, he doesn't use it other times. You know, he he chose to caucus with the Democrats. You know, when they when they took over the Senate, they gave him a committee position in exchange for caucusing. So he became the, the chair of the Senate, Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. It wasn't because he was a veteran. It wasn't because he had tremendous experience. It was because there was nothing left and they had to give him a chairmanship. So they gave him the chairmanship of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. And he said, OK, I'll generally caucus with you. That kind of negotiation happens pretty consistently behind the scenes. And I don't think most Americans see that or understand it. So I'm ex when I see an independent candidate, I'm excited just because I know it's a hard road. Andrew Yang, in many ways, would have been an independent candidate, you know, yeah. in another environment as an example. Right. Those kinds of one issue can't Ralph Nader, you know, could run on seatbelts. So sometimes it's also a lane for a one issue candidate or someone who wants to further an issue to get some significant uh, penetration and move the national conversation, even though they know they won't win. And I'd use, you know, Yang as an example, if he was talking about universal basic income as an independent candidate, he would have been successful. Right. If he just got that issue out there and wasn't trying to get elected president, you could argue that was a successful uh, endeavor. You know, I want to go back to what Paul said about um, it's difficult to be an independent candidate because um, this is this is written in our civics textbook, and it says that being an independent candidate is inherently is inherently difficult because a there is no unification of the parliament, as in the parliament can be disma dismantled instantly because the prime minister is from another another. Uh, party the president is from another party the lok the entire senate i'm using i'm, I'm using the word senate but i mean lok sabha but is is from entire in, entirety of another party so there, it does not um, unify the entire parliament but again there has to be some sort of a, you know an opposition party and a, you know a, 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 the, the ruling party but now this gets me to what uh, what was put put ahead as in when you look at Indian politics right now, just right now, it's very confusing. And because there isn't an opposition party per se, because you have a party that's ruling for the past four years, and you have a party who's like never going to win. Because, and, and we, have, we have like six major, poli major political parties, but we don't even consider them a major political party in like social this thing because they don't have a chance to win the so we have a leader who is mocked throughout the country i don't know if you guys know him um, his name is rahul gandhi and he is mocked like crazy i mean oh my god when i see it and it, it's so sad because i think he's 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 a little he, he's Yes, we, we actually have only one major party. That is true. And so it, it's a thing in India, if you get um, the major vote in the Lok Sabha, you have to be of a coalition party. That means coalition party is when one party merges with another party. Usually a strong party merges with a weaker party to get the major votes. Now, the four voting years, the name is BJP, Bharatiya Janta Party. God, I need to work on my Hindi. Bharatiya Janta Party. Um, these guys have not been co having a coalition party at all. Now, we don't have a leftist party. We only have a rightist party and a rightist party. <laughs> and it's funny because our, our generation is based on being leftist. It, when I talk to people, you will mostly see them you know indulge in socialism or you know marxism or something like that but considering the the fact that our our indian politics right now has no real choice so if you don't want to vote for bjp you either vote for congress which is rahul gandhi's party but if you vote for congress it's kind of stupid because he's not going to win but again bjp is extremely extremely so india is a secular country we have over 22 uh, scheduled languages and each state almost has its own language and they, what bjp is trying to do trying to do right now is kind of 
stop the country, I mean, stop the country from following any secularism. And this is really angering everyone, but they have no choice because who, who else would they vote for? I mean, if you if you don't like one party, then you don't you don't have another option. So it's kind of frustrating and people are trying to work on it, but it's it's not going anywhere, to be honest. I mean, that's like the, the, the thing that ranked choice voting, at least in the United States, we can like put one through five tries to fix. It's just my my only concern or question is that when you have all of these independents and all of these like super um, I, I think like the question what unifies political independence is, is really complicated because while they might be unified if you like ask them, I don't think that most independents are unified over the same things. It's very complex and uh, opaque political leaning. And so I just think that it, it's, it kind of just yields to the two party system. Like the whole thought of independence, I think is, is the opposite of a systems intervention because it, it is a part of the system that is there to make people with views that are ulterior from the two parties coalesce in a very weak way and not be able to make change, right? And so I have a question, I have a question to pose is like, how do you draw people from, right? Like back to this idea of freedom from and freedom to, how do you give people freedom from the two parties in a way that makes them have equal or, or more power than these two parties? Like, how do we, how do we get away from the point where independents are, you're throwing away your vote and you're throwing away your, your ability to caucus and all of that. Like, how do you free people from the two party system? Well, I, I, I'm not just oversimplify. You check out of the two party system. And I would argue that independents in a place like Pennsylvania are a hundred times more powerful than you as a registered Democrat in New York, right? They're already powerful. The idea that they're not powerful, I think is, is not true because they're right in this two party system. They're some of the most sought after voters that exist. I mean, you could look at the amount of money they spend on advertising and turnout to try to get those folks in their corner. So I think, I think their power is pretty significant. There's one thing I want to share with you guys which is Gallup's been polling on this and um, the support for third party candidates and a third party and different things is high and rising. So I think 62% now support a third party option. And maybe to put a button on what was a few different points in there, Thanazi, um, what I've seen that most effectively galvanizes independence and anyone is a leader. It's always the case, right? And, and I think the idea that Democrats are all united is ridiculous, right? I mean, Will Rogers said, I'm not a member of an organized party, I'm a Democrat. And Republicans have traditionally been more uh, in line and organized. But if you ask 100 Democrats what they stand for, they'll tell you, you know, 70, 80 different things. In my experience, and I think what we're seeing is that independent candidates or, or uniquely charismatic, uniquely powerful candidates can transcend party. Look, if The Rock ran tomorrow, he'd probably get 30% of the country. If he ran as an independent, maybe he'd get 40% of the country. But you know, if you think about candidates also as, as somewhat integral to how parties are defined, especially now, most of the country will define Democrats by Barack Obama or AOC or Joe Biden. They're not gonna tell you the policy agenda, they're gonna tell you a person. And I think that that can work, uh, frankly, in the favor of, of candidates and forcing us to focus on better candidates and better leaders that I also hope are independent from the influence of the parties and independent from the corporate structures and all the things that are bad about politics. Um, if you run as a Democrat, I'm gonna use New York City as an example. You have to kiss as many rings as you would. If, if, if you, you know, all the unions, all the, the interest groups, you have to literally go around and kiss ass for like weeks and weeks and weeks in order to get an endorsement. If you're independently wealthy or you're an unaffiliated candidate, you don't have to do that. So. Uh, bottom line for me is, is uh, again, I think it's an exciting time to have this conversation. And I think it's going to become increasingly exciting because I think you'll see more candidates declaring as independents, especially in places where they can. If they can independently fund it, if they can get public funding, if there is ranked choice voting, if you have like all three, if you have a rich person who has, uh, you know, a, a weak two party system in a state like Maine, right? Maine's elected governors that are independent. Uh, they tend to be more independent minded that might be where you see more candidates come out of and it's kind of like an independent proving ground if you will mm. Mm -hmm. holy shit oh, it's 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 
this just gets me. I don't know if this happens in the U.S., but I, I'm, I'm kind of sure that it happens in the U.S. Um, when you have an independent candidate, they kind of have to. Okay, I'm going to use. I'm going to say advertising, and I'm going to use sales terms here. But they kind of have to generate their base, if you know what I mean, on their own. So that would take you around, at least in our country, that would take you around, say, two, three years. So, but when you when you are part of a particular party, say, the Congress Party or the Bharatiya Janata Party, um, there are voters who will instantly vote for you because you come from a particular party. I mean. They wouldn't look at your bio data. They wouldn't look at your income tax returns. They would not look at anything. They'd be like, "Okay, is this person coming from this party? Okay, this this is the vote I'm giving." So it it becomes inherently hard for independent candidates to kind of get that base, because, like you said before, I think it was Paul who said that, you know, we kind of identify parties with more of persons more than what their policy says, and it's just like. like and like I said, it, it becomes very hard for independent candidates and not only independent candidates, candidates who are good, but they choose to go to a party which is less, which has less support. It becomes inherently hard for them to win. I have another provocation. Um, question are you like the designated provocateur today i like this is I, i'm new to I, this but i like this this is fun i just gotta tell you I guys, usually i'm enjoying usually, this conversation and i'm happy to be here so um go for it the nazi <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to spark a fire but i i i feel like i feel like i haven't really thought my thoughts through so most everything i say is probably going to come back and bite me in the ass but i <laughs> then you're perfect I feel for like, politics <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yes yeah. me too I, I, um, I feel like everything I'm saying, somebody's going to fact check me. Nah. Yeah. I think that, so is America truly independent? Um, not politically, but just free of, because I don't think we are, right? Like the, the reason why independents can't get um, a lot of, of support um, and the reason why political parties are so entrenched, right, is because this, this media system is it costs a shit ton of money to run ads. And that's the only way you can reach people is through like Facebook and Google and Instagram and all of those places. So you have to pay couple of companies, a shit ton of money to reach these voters in a certain way that they control. And then those, the, the anchors on the, it's, it's like very, I don't know, it's very monolithic. There's, there's this power structure that, that is keeping things. So are we, are we truly independent and, and can an independent America really exist where there are multiple parties? Um, I don't know. What does we, I, I just feel what like, does we mean? What do you mean? We means America. But like, yeah. what does that mean? Like, are you talking about, just saying, like, do, do I talk about Gary, like, as part of the we, like? No, I, I think as a country, I think as a country, right, like, how do you convince people um, that an independent movement or that a rejection of two-party politics is is the right way when their, like, hierarchy of, of needs and what they're thinking about is, is not really about, like, politics right now. Like, a lot of people don't think about politics all the time. I don't think you have think to about, think like, their family. I, think, I think this is where the data speaks for itself. I mean, like... That's part of why I'm sharing the trend lines, because I think they're significant. You're seeing some of the biggest shifts in a generation, right? And, and it's also exacerbated by the fact that you've got what is perceived as radical candidates on both sides. So imagine a world where Donald Trump ran against Bernie Sanders, okay? That could have happened. It was very close to happening. Many would have viewed that as extremes of both parties clashing. And Mike Bloomberg literally analyzed the numbers and said, if that happens, I'm running. When it becomes Biden, I'm not running because they had done the data analysis and determined whether or not there was a lane based off the amount of money they put. So I, I think that, you know, I'm challenging a couple of your premises, but most of all, like the macro question, like, are we truly independent? We could do a whole master's thesis on that, man. I mean, that's that's a macro question for an hour long talk. I mean, that it, it goes back to the same thing. It depends on how you define independent and independence. And that's part of why I've chosen this to be what I want to focus my show on, because it means many different things to many different people. But I do think, especially now, it can be a rally point. And I think that it can be a place to bring people together to have conversations like this and then hopefully move us forward. And some people that might not come together on anything else. 
Like I can get one third of Democrats that won't talk to anyone else. I can get one third of Republicans and get them to talk together about this issue. And it might be a bridge toward, let's talk about firearms reform. Let's talk about the stuff that's really, really hard. The middle or the centrist and or the independents are gonna be critical. Immigration, so many of these issues, if you don't think about those folks then you don't have a deal, right? Like you won't get it forward, especially when you got a 50, you know, 50, 50 Senate split. So um, I, I think it's a really exciting and important time. And the question is for your generation, if you're under 30, you know, when you go and just register, do you give it any thought at all, right? Do you, do you support ranked choice voting and things like that that can encourage a disruption of the system? Or you just say, you know what, I'm just, fuck it, I'm a Democrat, fuck it, I'm a Republican. <laughs> I think there's been too much, um, you know, citizenship laziness across the board and your generation is challenging all of that. And that's awesome. And that's what we need. So. Paul, so one thing that um, what you just said made me think of was that um, if there is an ideal that I independence should kind, of, should kind of, if there is similarity across independence, it's, there's going to, there might be some beliefs, but I think it's, it's as much as anything, it's process, right? It's like this idea of weighing, of looking at different, um, like policies, right? And not just dogmatically being like, okay, what side or another does it fall under? Um, I'm going to actually evaluate it for its merits, right? I'm going to think about, does it align with my values? Yeah. Um, having dialogue like this. I feel like this is like, if there, Tanasi, if there's any spirit of, of independence, I would love for it to be associated with dialogue. Um, and I think we're, we're in sort of a, we're in a bifurcated country, um, not, not, not just left, right, but like dogma versus independent thinking. And I, I, I think that, um, you know, I think CU is actually one of the rare civic education organizations that is at least attempting to not just be, I'm just gonna say this out loud, right? Like almost every civic education organization leans psh, one way, right? It, le it leans one way. Um, and I think we have a lot of work to do to uh, be better than that but um it's not about just like you know picking it's not about just feeding kids beliefs it's about teaching them how to think right and how yeah, to yeah. i think you're touching on something that that, that is important and I, I would actually challenge it you guys are here you're highly engaged you think about this shit all the time right for a lot of people it's not about a policy decision or it can it's almost like a spirit Right, it's like a spirit of independence. To some people, that means having wide open spaces, or it means being able to have a driver's license, or it means being able to have a gun, or it means being able to have control over your own body as a woman. Right, like for many people, it's specific. For some people, it's like America's independent from the British. I mean, like the spirit, the origin story of where we started is it's been cannibalized, it's been twisted. Right, you see that the insurrection is taking the worst of it. But there is a best of it. When I my show used to be called Angry Americans, and we used to say if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. But the question is, what do you do with that anger, right? Do you want to be an oath keeper and take the capital, or do you want to be Harvey Milk and change policy, right? Like you have a choice with what you do with your emotion. And I think there's a there's kind of a gut spirit to independence that is a part of defining America or has been in the past. And sometimes it just means like freedom from oppression. It means freedom of religion. It means freedom of choice. It meant for some freedom from taxation. Um, but look, tomorrow's 420. Like it's gonna be freedom to have marijuana in huge parts of this country. And it's gonna be very different from many other parts of the world. Like I did a show on this too. America is now leading on drug policy reform, on cannabis reform, on figuring those things out. So there are gonna be people, people who move here because they wanna smoke weed. They want to smoke weed and they want to be independent from the oppression of, you know, rigid cannabis laws. So I think a lot of what I've been exploring is the spirit of independence, which I think is interpreted in many ways in the same way America is. And it's been hijacked a lot lately, but we want to take that back and, and talk about good patriotism and a real conversation and positivity and not the negative bastardization of things like the American flag. Yeah, I mean, to both your points and to answer this question, I think America is way more independent than the two parties would like us to believe. And frankly, the media would like us to believe. Of course, it's not going to, if you turn on the news, it's not going to seem like 
you know, Americans are dissatisfied from the two parties because like that's not what they're incentivized to make us believe. And so, um, as, as Paul mentioned, like uh, Americans like are upset with the two parties. I mean, if you look at the data, like what, like 40% of Americans identify as independents, it's like a movement is waiting to be formed around this. And we need a candidate who is going to, um, who is going to represent you know, the, the millions of Americans who are dissatisfied with the current system. And I mean, a, as Gary mentioned, like maybe what independents have is like a shared process. And maybe that's why to Paul's point, independents seem to like disproportionately like support uh, many issues. It's because like, once you think about a lot of issues without a partisan lens, like it, beca it, it becomes a lot more clear. Like you, you see them a lot more clearly. And maybe that's why there is a lot of through line in this ish, like the similar issues that they support. Um, but yeah, I would say that like, we are way more independent than the people in power would like us to believe. You also kind of need like, you know, we've had disruptors, right? And, you know, if you think about AOC or Andrew Yang or Michael Bloomberg, like political disruptors, right? But let's imagine a scenario where Oprah ran four years ago as an independent, right? Like you can, you can laugh at it, right? Matthew McConaughey may run as run for governor in, in, in Texas. If he runs as an independent and he runs against Abbott, he'll probably win. Jesse Ventura ran in Minnesota. There've been examples of disruptors at the state level. So I think we are at a point where you need a big candidate to make the choice and to have the plan to be able to do it. But, but on the same path, you've got independent candidates running at the local level, at the city level. Some, some places where you can't list a candidate, uh, list a party affiliation, and those structural changes are happening too, but you're kind of one big candidate away from like, I think busting open a generation for you all that can say, oh, you mean I can really do it as an independent? And if Oprah ran and created a super PAC and said everybody under 40 who ran as a candidate is an independent, got a million dollars to work on your campaign, we'd have thousands of them, right? I think we're close to a movement like that that does galvanize a lot of what we've been poking around. So it's almost like the definition of independence is changing. Like the US Constitution was based on independence and that was true for that time. And it was about like status and power, autonomy, like consolidating your power. Um, but we're seeing this even economically that's not sustainable. And so like we're moving towards um, markets to networks and um, autonomy to community and then exclusivity to inclusivity. And I think this is so hopeful. You know, everyone, everybody's been talking about like how recently it's, it's been happening. I think this has been happening since the start of time. I mean, um, to give an example, when India was, India was, uh, yeah, it was freed from, Colon, colonization by the uh, by the British it was in the entire the entire thing was based on independence from British but once the British left who ruled us I mean Indians but somebody ruled us so I mean that not just America there can't be an independent world because it would be crazy I mean I at one point in time there is someone who has to rule someone well, I, I, this is this is very this is very deep, and I would say like Christians, for example, would say they're ruled by God, right? Exactly. And, yeah, and, and I and I I would say that a lot of people would argue that whether you're um, whether you're Christian or not, it's like these sort of principles of being like you know a good person and respecting other people's like human rights. That that's what governs us, which is really exciting for 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 me to think about because we need we should get to first principles right as we get to an increasingly decentralized hopefully decentralized governance uh, system um, what is what is our how do we judge if that system is, is governing us well right i would say it's it, it is if it's promoting our human flourishing uh, not and not not advantaging someone's like a particular groups of groups flourishing over another. But how do you how do you define human flourishing? For me, well, human flourishing would be something else. For you, human flourishing would be something else. All I'm saying is that when you think of independence, it's very personal. This has been put uh, put put forward earlier. 
but this is very personal and you can't have an independent state an independent country an independent world because it would cause chaos in society absolute mayhem would you know be pass in society because it, it would be very difficult to you know uh, define independence because i can always say this is not independence for me uh, for me i mean being a south indian historically south indians were considered pro british just saying um i'm a south indian but i live i live in uh, somewhere else but i mean as a south indian i can say that you know maybe british laws were good for me they gave me independence but you might say as a north indian or, or as a or as another country man you would you would say british take british laws take away independence from me i mean it's 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 even it's even difficult to think about can we have a truly independent state country or world you know i think i think i get what you what you're kind of saying and and right before we we move to reflection i just i think that independence is like the first step but if the independent movement doesn't make huge steps to fix the the systems of government such that we can move to a more decentralized system the only thing we get is just another party that would that would operate within the systems or you, party, yeah. or you get the status quo yes. like you know i mean yeah. it doesn't it's not, it doesn't have That's, to be an either exactly. or like th this is um like the the default does not have to be a third party that spoils everything like already maybe this conversation has encouraged a couple people on this call to think differently about their party affiliation, right? Like, I, I guess I the part the point that I think is really important, Thanazi, is this isn't working. We can't pass budgets. We can't defend our shores. We can't do anything functionally now as a country. Like, you know, we can't deal with the pandemic. And if we don't deal with the calcification of a political system that can't do basic things. Then that's what you know. Our yeah, no, no, I, I totally agree with you, and I think we're I think we're on the same exactly. page there. That the the independent movement has to be um, like defined as something more than a rejection of the two parties, and has to be defined as a as a as a movement to totally break these. It doesn't these have to be though. It doesn't, to, it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be anything, right? Like well, well yeah, no, of course it doesn't have to. It's just it, it, it my could be. That's I mean, part of why it it's always exciting be. is because it can be none of the above. If there's one thing that maybe unifies them, it can be none of the above. And that may not be enough for you as a policy wonk who wants them to come together and create a platform, but it can be, it can be fuck the system, right? That's what it is for many people is fuck the system. I want something different. And most people don't know what the different is. And that's when leaders can come in and guide them in the right mm -hmm. direction or the wrong direction or consensus can build. And so that's why I think it's also a really it's a dangerous time, but it's an important time to recognize that many of the people who felt this way went to Trump because Trump said, I hear you. I hear you say fuck all of them. And now the question is, can other leaders present off roads and opportunities to the future or do they more deeply calcify behind Trump? That's why I think part of this is is so urgent. It, sometimes just saying none of the above fuck the system is enough. <laughs> And that's why independent candidates are often so populist. You see that with Ventura and so many others that just say, fuck the system, right? I want something different. And people will support that alone in principle because the current system serves them in their view so poorly. I just want to butt in just, just one last thing before the reflection. Um, when you have two party, when you have a two party system that is constitutionally guaranteed, um, the clout that each party gets is supposed to be wide. I mean, you have a million issues, but you can't have two singular parties take these million issues, divide them in half and say, OK, you take this. OK, you take that. It is supposed to be diverse and it is going to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to, as you know, as, a, as, as the entire country and democracy studiers, we have to understand that this is not a, an inherently bad thing. It's just something we have to accept and work on. Absolutely. Um, I really wish we had more time to have this conversation. I because I feel like this is just... fun. Do you guys do this every week? Is this what you do every week? <laughs> we do. This, yeah, we do this a couple times a week. And I would love to have another one because I feel like we're literally just scratching the surface. And I know there are a lot of voices we haven't heard from. I'll leave that up to you guys if we can pull them in. But um, I, I know you guys have it. Gary's got the very hard job of trying to be moderator in, in, a, in a fun TV show that we got going on here, right? <laughs> So I'm yes. sympathetic to that as a media person. I am sympathetic to that, Gary. This is this is I'm, just a pilot. 
This is just the pilot for 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 this thread. I I mean I think I said in the chat we should definitely do a part two. Yeah, exactly. I'm down for sure. part two. This is great. This is, cool. this is nice. So I I sent the link to the notes in the chat so that you all can look over and think about your reflection. Uh, but to start off, just like a couple things, thinking about what you all were talking about, like Paul and Thanasi and Damishka, about like what it would mean for like to unify independence. I think that what Paul was talking about of like being against the system, I think that is good for electability, but it's not sustainable long term. Like what happens once the system is disempowered? then what unifies people like if you don't have a clear path forward for what the alternative looks like it's not going to be a better future and so i think that's really important because then you can get people like you mentioned trump who just feed off the discontentment with the system but they don't have a better alternative forward and so it just leaves us into like an even worse future i guess if people are able to capitalize on that yeah um, second i love the point that you brought up paul about independents do have power right now. And those are the people that um, politicians are trying to sway that they spend the most money on because they're people who think critically about what they actually support and believe in. And so it's so cool to just shift your mindset from independents are in the minority to independents are actually in the majority as opposed to like Democrats or Republicans and they have power. We just need someone to utilize that power to build a better future for us all. I can go, I can go next if nobody else wants to. Um, so this track is very unusual for me. I've been to previous tracks and it's mostly given me information and knowledge, but this track, I mean, I came into this track thinking that I'm just going to sit and not talk and listen because I'm not aware too much of this topic. But just hearing the entire conversation going has enlightened me as to how much I know about this topic and as to how much I know about my country's and US's history, current politics and, and things like that. And I think that's, that's also a very important thing to know what you know. And, you know, this track has, this track has given me that, that power to know what I know. It's dope. Um, I thought this was uh, this is awesome. Uh, I really appreciated Thanasi's um, Thanasi and Paul's back and forth. Um, I thought. Are we skipping this list over here, or I'm I'm trying to follow the bouncing ball. Yeah, no, is, we can is, we can is go it Jay ahead. He's supposed to go can now. Go I don't know. I'm no, sorry. it 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 just it just it just whoever. Um, okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, and I I thought there there's a lot to say about what just happened but i think there's a lot of like i think what this reminded me was that words are words really words are really interesting and they matter because everyone has different definitions of what the word means and also but even if you have a similar definition you may disagree on all sorts of things related to that concept um and there's just so much to unpack here and like the word independent or like is just, it has everything to do with almost everything that, that matters in to America's future. <laughs> like, why are people pissed, right? What is a good alternative? Um, how, how, how do you reform the system to be better, right? This all has to do with this word. I'm like, okay, wow. This is one of those, um, I think it's one of those rare situations where we could just continually talk about this and like continue to pull, to, to find new threads to to, 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 to to explore together. Every week on Independent Americans, it's in your podcast library, everywhere you get, this is why we did it. You, you like just did a promo for my show, Gary. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll go. Um, so, I mean, people are just like tired of the polarization, especially knowing that our country and then in turn the people are staying stagnant because of it. And I don't even know if like stagnant's the word. It feels like, it's kind of like a sliding scale of deterring between stagnant and like a little bit some steps backwards and back to stagnant that's how it feels right now and like Paul mentioned earlier like there needs to be a disruptor um we like have to move through the noise and move forward and like make things about the people and not parties so I only see an independent candidate being able to do that 
um, of course, like we mentioned earlier, having a clear vision and path for what moving forward and what better is for everyone. But yeah, like in terms of a big disruptor so that we can move forward and not be stagnant, I think an independent candidate would have to do that. Yeah, I think I think my my reflection is is more about um, I think Paul, like you, the way you you challenged some of the notions is just a proof that the two party system and just the world inherently makes your view on all of this really closed. And so while I don't agree with everything you said, I think that you definitely challenged me to open up the, the framing and like how I think about the things. Cause I think the two party system is really toxic and it definitely gets into almost every part of American life at this point. And it really influences the way your subconscious processes information and to Gary's point and, and Madison's like when you don't teach people how to think or when you don't give people alternatives, um, there's, there's no way to pull out of the downward spiral. So this was actually one of the best tracks I think I've been on. It was, it was just very enlightening. I'm glad to hear that. Can we hear from Will if he wants to? Yeah. I, I think he's the only one we haven't heard from, right? He's in Brooklyn, so I got a special opportunity <laughs> for him. Um, I feel this is a conversation that needs to happen nationwide or worldwide because there's just, everybody's just gonna share their opinions and it's just gonna be continuous chaos until we come to one point. Um, I don't really see there being an end or it happening anytime soon because simply on even on this call, like everybody was sharing their opinions and it was just back and forth ping pong. So we lost you at the end there, but I think we got most of it, right? Yeah. Guys? I don't know. Yeah, and finally, I think that um, experiencing this track has left me and very empowered and honored to kind of like witness like a crucial growing pain of this evolving system. And I think it's important not to antagonize the old world system we have um, as something that is wrong or something that we must reject. I think we're just like simply outgrowing it with like how much we make progress, democratizing everything, access to everyone and sharing our voices. And like Gary said, we're like even growing our, our vocabulary as more complex and nuanced. I love that. I love that. Hey, can I, can I share one thing with you guys? Um, we talk about uh, righteous media wants to be for independents and unaffiliated what Fox News is for the right or what MSNBC is for the left. We're trying to be a disruptor and a challenging force, but also a uniter. We say a lot that we're kind of like, um, we're talking to folks who are like Seattle supersonic basketball fans. Like they're still out there. They just don't have a team. And if you're not that big of an NBA fan, it's just, it's a bunch of people who love basketball, but they don't have a pro team. And if you put a pro team out there, they're going to come out and root for them. And I think that's what I'm seeing across the landscape. And maybe if there's one thing I'll leave with you guys after being in this advocacy game and doing a lot of stuff over the last, you know, 30 years, don't be easy. Like, don't be an easy, like, mark for a party or a candidate. Like, the power comes from you challenging and being independent and being discerning. And there's a lot of folks that just want to chalk you up because of your race or your demographic and say, oh, you must be a Democrat. You must be a Republican. And I think we need urgently real systems change, but we need the empowerment of individuals. And I don't think the system has enough of that. And your generation, I keep saying that. But, but I feel like everybody in this country post 9-11 and then reaffirmed after the pandemic has this kind of political awakening and, you know, be the change you seek. You are the change. And I would just most of all leave you with like, don't, don't take what they spoon feed you, challenge it. And, and if you can do that, you know, in who you vote for or what you watch, then that's, I think, one of the best spirits, the good spirit of America that, was, that our country was founded on and that you all can bring back and reinvigorate and what happens next. Absolutely. Um, so since this is your first Trek, Paul, I want to know what you think about the Trek overall. Y'all are awesome. You guys, I, I'm, I love this. This is great. I mean, I love it. You know, it's, it's awesome. And uh, look, here's the thing. Getting shit done in politics. And, and for those of you who don't know, I worked on the GI Bill and Don't Ask, Don't Tell reform and a lot of big shit over the last 20 years. Like you got to show up. And you gotta, you gotta put the time in and you gotta take the lumps and you gotta be in the arena. And you're not always gonna agree. You're gonna have plenty of clashes and it's gonna suck sometimes, but you gotta be in it to, to make real change. And you all are here. 
You could be doing a lot of other things with your hour, but you came here. And I would encourage you to recognize that there's a power in the connection that you have. And don't try to get everybody on board one thing. It might just be getting together to watch a debate or be a part of something. But that connection is so lacking in this country right now. And it's powerful. So the connection you all have here is what excites me about your organization and about your leadership. And I'm all in to help any way I can. But don't let them break you up. Like, you guys, look at this. This is like the future, not just America, but the world. And, you know, um, having you all here is, is inspiring. So let me know how I can help. Call me anytime. I got your back. Yeah, I mean, just you talking there just like got me so excited about the future of what the future of politics will look like and uh, with independence and everything and our, our generation coming to power. And I am excited to look into righteous media um, to, to listen to some stuff. And I'm sure everyone else here is as well. And we loved having you, obviously. Uh, we're ready for a second uh, trek on independence whenever you are. And uh, yeah, it'll be great to have you back. Keep um, after it, y'all. I'm really inspired by you. And, uh, you know, I know Gary's got my contact info. If I can support any of y'all in any way, let me know. But, but, but keep after it. We need you. It's only the future of our world. So, you know, <laughs> thanks no, is high. No, no pressure. No pressure. Thanks is high. But you're up for it. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me. All right. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you for having bye -bye. me. Bye-bye.